Okay, it's 6 a.m. I'm at the airport and we're in Upsons 4 and I'm heading out to Los Angeles, California for Intel. Quick question, what do you get when you mix 1,700 young minds together in one room? Tell you what you get, you get the International Intel International Science Engineering Fair right here in Los Angeles and 1,700 students from around the world are solving real world problems in science, biology, chemistry, engineering, robotics, virtual reality, technology and everything in between and are solving it today and these kids are all under 18. Let's go check it out. Hi, I'm Jacqueline. I'm from Worsh School West Point. And I'm Zama Zimba and I'm from Milton Manor High School. We're here to represent our country in a national, an international science fair where we show what is, um, groundbreaking research we did at our home country. Um, the name of our project is the influence of pollution on bacterial diversity in dams. We went to three different dams in our area in Gauteng and we collected samples from those dams. And using uh, genetics, we analyzed the uh, water samples we got to see how the pollution in the area impacted the amount of bacterial species in the water. And we found that with increasing levels of pollution, there was decreasing, decreasing levels of bacterial diversity in the different dams. Well, with the increasing human population, we're having a um, bigger problem with pollution right over the world. And we only test it in our country, but we believe as we go further and we test more dams all over the world, we'll find that even in other countries, pollution and bacterial diversity is a problem. Um, a normal dam is supposed to be balanced, so everything is supposed to look normal. The water is not supposed to have a blanket over it. So in this case, our investigation was focusing on the waters, on the actual waters with blankets on them. And this would disturb the ecosystems within the water and will, will definitely, like, essentially destroy the balance of life. In grade 9, we were chosen from our respective schools. Uh, apart from all, the, all of the learners because of our excellence in the fields of mathematics and science. Through this journey we spent about six months doing the actual research and after that still more months refining what we did and from there we went to a regional expo and then a national expo until we ended up here and even throughout that journey we found obstacles and sometimes research didn't work out the way it did but even through that you learn to persevere and go on. Um, science is not necessarily for the intelligent mind, it's really for the creative mind. So all these scientists actually have new ideas, innovative ideas. So we invent stuff, we create new things, we find easier ways to do things. And I'd say we're more creative than we are intelligent. So I say if you're still not sure, just start to play around with science and all those STEM skills and in the end when you get those first results, you'll start to get hooked and you never get off it. <laughs> have sun exposure for most of the year and with um, increased sun exposure comes diseases such as skin cancer and sun related injury, sunburn and although a lot of people use sunscreen there is a huge problem with sunscreen and that is that it wears off after time and people often do not reapply. 
in Australia, they use the most sunscreen in the world, but they have the highest rate of skin cancer. And so what I wanted to do was develop an indicator that would let people know when their sunscreen has worn off, so that they could reapply and thereby protect themselves from the sun. And to do this, I used something called photochromism. I got photochromic compounds, and basically these are colorless indoors. So if you look at the picture, they are colorless, and when exposed to sun, they become colored. And I use these compounds to formulate, or to make a formulation. And the idea was that one would apply this formulation onto their skin and cover it with sunscreen. So for as long as the sunscreen protected the formulation from ultraviolet light, it would be colorless. And as soon as the sunscreen wore off, it would become colored because it would be exposed to ultraviolet radiation. And thereby the person would know that the sunscreen has worn off when they see the color and know to reapply. And so I concluded that this formulation could be an effective way to protect yourself. If one were to apply it to their skin, I was thinking of using a sort of roller ball. And if one were to draw a pattern on their skin, cover it with sunscreen, as soon as the sunscreen wore off, it would change color and they would know to reapply. And I thought the idea of the changing color would be fun and would appeal to people and also make them want to protect themselves more. So that's basically my project. Thank you. So, what were you doing when you were their age? And this was only a small sample. Thank you Intel for putting ISAF on, for supporting these amazing projects and getting these kids out there into the field of STEM. I look forward to seeing how these things develop. If you are new to this channel, smash that subscribe button and I'll see you on the next episode of Talking Tech with the Techie Guy.